one verse, only one statement anywhere in your Bible, any version of the Bible where he says, worship me. He says, worship me. But if we read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement. In the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says, or where he says, worship me, or where he says, worship me, or where he says, worship me. From the Bible uh, perspective, why isn't there a unambiguous, unequivocal statement that where Jesus is to worship me, is to worship me? In this video, I will thoroughly debunk the old Muslim argument that Jesus never said, worship me. There's an easy way to prove if this is true or not. We open up the Bible and take a look. But first, let's do this. Did Jesus even receive worship in the Bible? That would give us a big clue. Is If he told people to do it, do people do it? Do people worship Jesus in the Bible? And if they do worship Jesus in the Bible, does Jesus rebuke them for worshiping him? Let's find out. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The Apostle Thomas, after Jesus' resurrection, was having trouble believing until he actually saw him. And when Thomas saw the resurrected Jesus, he fell down at his feet and said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, You are blessed because you have seen me and believed. So yes, Jesus was worshipped and he was called Lord and God. And the guy that did it, Jesus blessed him and said he was doing what was correct. So yes, Jesus was called God. He was called Lord. And that's what Jesus expected because he blessed this guy, Thomas, for saying the correct thing that, yes, he is Lord, he is God, and he deserves worship. Luke 19, 37 through 40. Already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice, for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. So here we have a great multitude of people worshiping Jesus. And the Pharisees are griping about it, telling Jesus to rebuke them. And he doesn't rebuke those who are worshiping him. He rebukes the guy that's not worshiping him. And the truth stands on its own, my dear Muslim friends. Uh, if you refuse to worship Jesus, that does not mean that he doesn't tell you to worship him or that you should worship him. The truth stands on its own, just like this Pharisee who refuse to worship Jesus. Now, what does Jesus mean by these stones crying out to him and worshiping him? Well, Jesus had made a prediction that all of the temple would be brought down. It would be raised. It would be destroyed. And not one stone would lay upon another. And Jesus was referencing that prediction and saying that these stones will be crying out in judgment because I will come and judge those who refuse to worship me. And the Apostle Peter saw it in the same way. 1 Peter 2 As you come to him, Jesus, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves like living stones are built up as a spiritual house, to a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So the new temple is believers in Christ where the Holy Spirit indwells them just like in the Old Testament where the Holy of Holies is where the Spirit of God dwelt and now it dwells within Christians. So Christians are now the temple of God. 
For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. He's talking about Christians. A holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Who are we as believers? As Peter says, we are like living stones built up into spiritual house. And for what purpose? That we may proclaim the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the living stones are Christians worshiping Jesus. So that's what Jesus meant by these living stones will call out to me in worship. Are you worshiping Jesus, my dear Muslim friends? The Apostle Peter did, and the Pharisee did not, and those who did not were judged. Matthew 14, 33. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And Jesus did something that only God can do. He took control of the weather spoke a word, and the weather obeyed his word, and the storm ceased while the Jesus and his apostles were in the boat, and they recognized his deity, and they worshipped him, which means that this title, the Son of God, is a divine title. They worshipped Jesus. Luke twenty four fifty two, And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. After Jesus had been resurrected from the dead, he visited these two guys. They saw Jesus for who he was, and they worshipped him. And Jesus never rebuked a single person for giving him worship. Revelation 5.11 Then I looked, and I heard the voices of many angels and living creatures and elders encircling the throne, and their number was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. The Lamb of God that was slain is in heaven. And here is a scene from heaven itself where Jesus is sitting on the throne of God and all of creation is worshiping Jesus. Every angel, every creature that loves him, that, has, uh, that adores him, is worshiping him. You're being left out, my dear Muslim friends, if you refuse to see who the Bible really says, about what the Bible really says about who Jesus is. Yes, he is worshipped by all of creation. Why did his disciples worship him? Well, they recognized that he was God in the flesh. And they recognized through his deeds, through his words, through his actions, through his uh, sitting on the throne, to claiming to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and backing it up with his actions, like doing things that only God can do, like calming the storm, a, a raging sea, or forgiving sin. There's a multitude of things that Jesus actually did to prove that he is God. And not only that, from his own mouth, Jesus tells you, my dear Muslim friends, to worship me. John 5, 23. So that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. So my dear Muslim friend, Jesus is claiming 
that you should honor him the same way you honor Allah. How do you honor Allah? Through worship. So Jesus is saying, if you do not worship me, you're not truly, truly worshiping God. So yes, Jesus commands you to worship him. And if you don't, it means that you're not worshiping the true God. This is from Jesus' own mouth. When he says, honor me the same way you honor God, he's telling you to worship him. Will you do that today, my dear Muslim friends? Jesus is the Son of God who died on a cross to save you from your sin. And He is the Lord. And He rose from the dead to save you. And when you put your trust in Him, you start following Him as your Lord and as your Savior. And you start to worship Him. And my dear Muslim friends, there's really nothing like worshiping the true God Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity. Now, we worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one being, but we also worship Jesus because He is God and He deserves our worship. Are you worshiping Jesus, my dear Muslim friend, like all of heaven did, like all of creation does, that Jesus commands you to do? And if you refuse to do it, you will be judged, just like the Pharisees. I don't want you to be judged, my dear Muslim friends. I want you to be saved. And so does Jesus. So, if you make that decision to start worshiping Jesus today, my dear Muslim friends, you will never regret it.